This must be the most difficult question to answer on what threshold should be used for appointive versus elective. What, in your view, based on experience and precedence, is it time we depart from it that uh, a cabinet secretary is charged, you step aside? A cabinet secretary with a court case, what should happen, in your opinion? Well, I, I must say that um, uh, that that is a very uh, important question. And uh, I, I speak also as a member of parliament who served on the appointments committee in the last uh, parliament. And I think there's a big um, confusion here. Uh, when members of parliament speak uh, passionately uh, about appoint appointments of the executive, they completely confuse their role. You know, there's the, ex the president, mm -hmm. is the president of the country, he's got a, a job to do, he has selected his loyalist, uh, and some of this uh, selection uh, disregards integrity and other issues. Uh, that is his job. He, he presents it to Parliament. Now, from the discussions that are taking place here, mm -hmm. it seems parliamentarians are, are apologists uh, for the executive. Mm -hmm. they, they defend whatever position uh, the, the, the president takes uh, without understanding what their role is. The role of Parliament is as a check and balance against the executive. Our job is to make sure that, in fact, we follow the rules that are laid down, and the Appointments Committee is one a particular check, uh, which are, uh, interrogates, examines what the president has brought to the House, and then brings out any uh, defects or any uh, problems that may exist. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the job of uh, parliamentarians to rubber stamp or, or praise what the president has done. So I think there is a misunderstanding here, uh, and I think we need to... The other point that I also would like to question is the fact that the president had an opportunity to take, uh, to, to look at the pool of expertise and, uh, of people in our country. We are 50 million after all. And there's an enormous, uh, um, enormous uh, expertise out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, it seems that, um, that he could have uh, selected um, many types of competences, uh, many professional people with training and experience who are needed at this particular moment, uh, critical moment in our country, to be part of the cabinet. Mm -hmm. But he chose not to. He has chosen uh, loyalty, political allegiances, and so on, so that he can have a team that uh, uh, would, would work with him the way he wants it. So I think that the, the appointments committee and parliament have their job cut for them. Mm -hmm. And I think we should, put our, uh, we should uh, raise our standards. The argument here is everybody is corrupt, Everybody has integrity problems. It doesn't matter. Even our president was uh, an ICC, um, the International Criminal Court uh, person. This doesn't, um, this excuses does not mean that we should lower our standards to the point mm -hmm. that we pack our cabinet with people who are really not co competent. Even defending someone who was, had completely failed uh, to raise to the occasion, uh, like um, the nominee who has been mentioned of tourism, is that we, we are ready to... Um, to look the other way because of our loyalty to the, to the executive. And I think here uh, the Azimio team uh, should do what they need to do. The numbers are against them. But I think it is important that they should put their foot down and say, this is what we have observed. And these particular uh, cabinet nominees are not deserving to be in our cabinet because of this factor or that factor. Mm -hmm. For example, I sat in the, in the last appointments committee when we, uh, when we um, approved uh, Richard uh, Rashidi Chesa, who really didn't meet the criteria of a cabinet secretary. Mm -hmm. But the question uh, the, committee, the appointments committee had at that moment is that there is no criteria for a cabinet minister. We don't have an educational qualification. We don't have an experience and professional uh, competence for a, for, for a cabinet. The law does not specify. Uh, but, but were you convinced that he was fit for the office? Did he convince you? No, he didn't. For me, I was a dissenter, and although I was a member of the, uh, of the, the party in government, mm -hmm. I didn't feel that he was uh, deserving to be in our cabinet. But numbers... And how did you vote? No, the numbers... Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, committee, the committee is already read. Look at the committee. The role of parliament, as you said, should yes. not be about... Anyone anyway, do you believe it? <laughs> no, no, I, I dissented. I dissented. But it doesn't matter whether... What, it doesn't matter whether the whole of Azimio, members of parliament, dissent tomorrow. 
uh, or this afternoon when they bring this particular report because the numbers are against them. Look, the committee is already rigged. Uh, the, the, the chairperson of the committee is the speaker uh, of the National Assembly, who is none other than um, um, uh, uh, Wetangula, who is uh, uh, one of the principals of the ruling party. The, deputy, uh, the other team that sits there is the deputy speaker, the majority leader, the deputy majority leader. So already this committee is, 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 is tilting towards uh, the government position. And nobody is going to embarrass the president by a member of that particular committee from the ruling party mm -hmm. is going to embarrass the president by rejecting his nominee, however bad that nominee. The second element on this appointments committee and in parliament is the fact that there are people who are not in Kenya Kwanzaa who would support the nominee because of their region, mm -hmm. because of their ethnicity, or because of their gender. So, you know, there are many other factors. For example, I remember sitting in one of the vetting committees where there was a, an ambassador, uh, ambassadorial nominee, who did not meet the cut as far as uh, uh, my, uh, my observations were concerned. And one member sitting next to me leaned over and said, do you know this woman is from my uh, county? And my county has never had an ambassadorial appointment since independence. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, my friend, are you going to uh, let her drop out? Are you going to discriminate against our county and against the women uh, of our county? So there are many factors when people look. There's a human factor, there's a political factor. But I think Parliament's job is to be above board, to set the standards high, and to make sure that we don't fill our institutions with incompetent people who might be loyal uh, to the ruling party or to the president of the day. 